Hello and welcome to the Comlex 5 minute review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for more lectures, podcasts, and additional mnemonics and tips on how to study for the Comlex board exam. Let's take a look at this question. 24 year old female emigrated from Philippines comes in for an eval for a heart murmur. Her heart rate's 82, oxygen saturation is 97, JVP is normal, carotid pulses are brisk with rapid upstroke, lungs are clear, there is sustained apical impulse in the sixth intercostal space, S1 is normal, and S2 is physiologically split with normal P2. A soft S3 is audible. There is a continuous murmur with crescendo decrescendo quality that's heard throughout and it's loudest at the third left intercostal space. So, this patient comes in and you're looking at several murmur characteristics where you're focusing on, primarily because her heart rate is okay, saturation looks fine, there's no signs of JVP, um, and you know, you're looking at that continuous murmur, crescendo, decrescendo. Um, there is also an S3 that's audible, um, and the S2 is physiologically split, okay, so there's no... Um, you know, wide splitting, anything like that, that's seen here. So what is your diagnosis? This is mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis and insufficiency, pulmonary stenosis and insufficiency, or is it patent ductus arteriosus? Well, the answer is patent ductus arteriosus. In acyanotic adults with patent ductus arteriosus, communication is usually small. The murmur is soft and confined to systole. Most adults with large patent ductus have Eisenmeiger's physiology and are not surgical candidates. Now closure is indicated if associated with a murmur to prevent complications of endarteritis. Closure percutaneously with coil. So these are some of the points that you want to keep in mind um, when you manage a patient with PDA. Again, to review some of the key things, the murmur is soft and confined to systole. We know that it's a, going back to the question, we know the continuous murmur with crescendo, decrescendo quality is a big clue um, as to it being a PDA. Now, most adults with large PDAs have Eisenmeiger's physiology, which is something that you should keep in mind, and they're not surgical candidates. Again, this is an acyanotic condition. The closure is indicated if associated with a murmur to prevent the complications of endarteritis. So that's, that's a key point. And closure percutaneously with coil. Now let's also talk about patent foramen ovale. This is persistent in 20% of people. It can be associated with interarterial septal aneurysm. Can be diagnosed by contrast echo and there's a risk of paradoxical embolism. The specific indications for closure of a patent foramen valley after a cerebral embolic event remain unclear. The key thing here you want to focus on is the person who comes in with possible association with an intraarterial septal aneurysm and paradoxical embolism. Okay, those are the two key clues here. Again, visit comlexflashcards.com for more video lectures and resources on preparing for the Comlex board exam. Good luck in your preparation.